Hi, this is Stu and welcome to our little stretching for yoga series. And today we're going to look at the ankle and just basically two movements really. This ability to do this, which is called plantar flexion, and we might see the need to do that in postures like Purvo Tanasana, yeah, where we're from here and we're lifting up and we want to actually bring our feet to the floor. Okay. Um, also other postures where we're taking our leg behind and um, drawing a, basically a straight line across the front of the shin. So if we're feeling that we're actually lifting here, then that's bringing the whole hip up. Yeah? Sometimes we might find also when we're doing um, child's posture, yeah, we might find again if we're being lifted here, then we land up being tipped forwards and we actually, you know, it doesn't feel very relaxing at all. It's not going to be the only restriction. In many of these postures, there could be other issues relative to the low back tightness or quadricep tightness, but it does crop up in the postures and can be really, you know, quite uncomfortable. And then we find that people want to turn their feet out, which then places problems with the, the knee, yeah? Or even in this posture, they might draw the feet towards the center, yeah, and let the heels drop out as they sit down. Because again, these are all signs that really you're trying to escape across from restriction across the front of the ankle. But then it might be placing stresses elsewhere, yeah? So often the things that you need to do is basically do more of what it is you're finding the restriction in. And really you've got to, there's no easy way apart for the, for the plantar flexion but basically to sit in some position where you're in a plantar flexed position, yeah? So you might want a cushion, yeah? So depending on how tight you are on here, the main thing is not, you know, to be kind to yourself. Basically don't sort of really have to sit there grimacing because this area can be a little bit sensitive and, and, and don't push it too much. I remember I found when uh, I was learning to do Thai massage, we had to do a lot of what I'm gonna do, show you now and actually over the course of the month, it actually improved quite a lot. Um, so, and it really is just sort of sitting on your heels with your feet as in line as possible. So try not to let your toes drop in or out, but keeping it all in line, yeah? Now, if that is a little intense for you, it might be that you need to fold up your cushion and put it, you know, between so it's actually touching the floor, yeah? So that you can sit on the cushion and take some of your weight off of your heels, yeah? Um, you're still gonna want some weight going down because that's what's gonna help to sort of open you up a little bit, but not too much. As I say, you don't wanna be sitting there in pain. But this sort of thing, just sitting like this, is really one of the most effective ways of opening up the front of this part of the, the leg, okay? And if you if you're, uh, do running, uh, and particularly if you do hill running, uh, it, you can tighten up across the front of the ankle here. And so this is a really good exercise for you to do when you come back straight from your run, yeah? It's just sit on your heels for a while like this, and it helps to open up the front of your ankle, yeah? Um, one of the major points that is restricting that ability to do that is this muscle that runs down the front here, which is called the tibialis anterior. So it's to the outside or the lateral side of the tibia, yeah, and you can find that, you know, this is this ridge of bone, or a shin bone, we would say, running down the front, yeah, and it's this squidgy part of muscle here. Now, you can press into it and feel, oh, hold on a bit, there's a little bit of a tender area or whatever as you're coming down, or you might feel very soft, or it might feel, if it's very soft, the chances are you can plant our flex relatively easy. If it really feels quite hard, then the chances are that's what's restricting you. So you can, in fact, you know, help yourself by just sort of getting yourself into a position maybe where your foot is, um, I, I come to the side so you can sort of see me a little bit more easily. Maybe that your foot is up, come here, and maybe use your knuckles, depends on how squeamish you are, and starting at the top and just pressing down, following along on the squidgy muscle um, to the outside of the shin, and at the same time, starting to take your foot into plantar flexion, yeah? 
So you start up again here, and then basically you're trying to get the muscle to lengthen as you're also lengthening it by the movement at the ankle. Yeah, so you can try that sort of thing. Might just help to relax it, or you can just try just little circles with your fingers to try and actually get in there and get some movement. Yeah. So these are some things that you can do to try and help it. But basically, so for the plantar flexion, really the most simple exercise is just to be sitting on your heels, really, in this sort of position. Yeah. So we just recap. So we're just going to be sitting like this and looking at our feet and making sure that they're not tucking in or tucking out. And just sit there for a while. And it might be if it's a little bit too much for you, just bring your weight forward. Yeah. And then just gradually, gradually ease yourself back until it's actually more comfortable, yeah? And if you do that sort of thing daily, it will help quite a bit. Okay, if we move on to the other uh, movement that we're going to talk about is the ability to dorsiflex our foot. So that's to take the top of our foot towards the shin. So we might find that in uh, down dog, yeah, we have difficulty getting our heels down. Now, that could also be coming further up that back line. Of course, anything on that back line might be influencing our ability to do that. But a majority of the restriction will be down here, yeah? Depending on how we can align our pelvis, it might be hamstring. But in down dog, let's say, depending on where your feet are, there could be some issues going on uh, at the ankle end of things. So to order to do this, we have two muscles we need to think about on the, the back of the calf, yeah? One is the gastrocnemius muscle, and that actually crosses the knee, yeah? The other muscle that lies deep to the gastroc is the soleus muscle, and that doesn't cross the knee. So this will influence what, what uh, happens when we do particular postures, yeah? So if it's a straight leg posture, so like, for instance, down dog, that we are feeling our restriction in, that we can't seem to get our toes towards us, so we can't get that angle we want, then the chances are it could be gastrocnemius, yeah, because its attachments are crossing the knee uh, under a stretch and also at the calcaneus, the heel bone. So the whole muscle is being lengthened, yeah, as we're trying to basically draw our toes towards us in our down dog position. Maybe I should just do down dog for you so that you can get an idea here. So from this position, yeah, if my heels were up here, you can see then as I sink down, can you see how the angle changes at my ankle just here? So from here, if I can sink my ankles down, you can see the movement happens here. So if it won't happen there, then I'm going to be stuck up in the air, yeah? Obviously, there needs to be something going on at the hip too, yeah? But if, if my hips feel quite okay, but I just can't get my heels down, then it can be this muscle here. It can be gastrocnemius. If you have no issues when you do that sort of thing, but when you're trying to squat, yeah, then you can't get your heels down, yeah? You're trying to squat, and they won't go down, yeah? then things have changed slightly, yeah? It can be then that it's the restriction in the muscle that lies underneath, the soleus muscle, because it doesn't cross the knee. And in the squatting positions, our knee is bent. Therefore, we should have taken the stretch out of the gastrocnemius, yeah? Perhaps I can show it to you. If I go into a squat here, and I get this... Can I get that? You can see it's quite soft. It's not really under very much of a stretch, even as I take my knee forward, yeah? It's more the deeper muscle that is under a stretch, yeah? So depending, the reason I've gone into all this little palaver is because depending on the, the muscle that is actually restricting it will influence how we're going to stretch it out, yeah? So if it's a straight-legged restriction at the ankle, then we need to try and stretch it with a straight leg, yeah? So we can actually do our down dog, yeah? And one of the things that I find works quite well is either doing a three-legged dog or um, alternately walking, yeah? So you can come into your down dog, and from there, you're basically just walking one leg at a time. 
If you have a tendency to hyperextend your knee, just be careful that you don't lock out at the back, yeah? So you're just walking to warm it up. Once you've warmed up, what you can do then is you can take one leg and place it behind the other, yeah? And then you'll find that you've got more weight coming down into that single leg, yeah? And then you can change over and do the other one, yeah? And you might want to change the angle of your body because we're not doing, we're not doing down dog really. What we're trying to do is do something that looks like down dog to actually access the ankle. So it really doesn't matter that if the rest of your down dog doesn't look like down dog. You're trying to actually get some movement at the ankle here, yeah? If, uh, and then we'll, I'll show you another exercise against the wall as well. And of course, there's, I've got a block as well. So I'll show you some block, some block works too, plus something you can do on a step. But first of all, I'll swap over to the bent knee version. So if we're having trouble squatting, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be the ankle that's stopping us. Of course, it can be our ability to flex the hip. So it could be the glutes that are restricting us, yeah? Very unlikely to be the hamstrings because the knees are bent, yeah? So we, we might want to find ourselves something to hold on to because it's that squatting is actually going to work quite well for us. So quite often when people first start the second series, the first posture is Pashasana, and it's, oh my God, you know, I can't squat to do it. So something you can do is either start off with your deep squats, yeah, and with the legs apart, seems a little bit easier, yeah, and these are actually good to do anyway for lots of things because it really opens up uh, many parts of the hip. So I would suggest you just do squatting as part of your daily routine. If you don't use it as your preferred method for evacuating your bowels, then maybe have your breakfast in this sort of position, your cereal or something. So um, you can squat. If this is already quite too much for you, then put something underneath your heels so as you're actually in a position where you've got a little bit of height. So you might want to fold up your mat to give you something that you can actually find sort of semi-comfortable. But then you're going to need to re reduce that amount of height in order for the fact that then as you're going to get better, your heels are going to go down, okay? You can then also hold something in front of you, yeah? And pull yourself forward so as you can create more dorsiflexion here. So I'm holding onto a pillar or something and pulling myself forward. So this is what we've set up using this little strap on the wall, and now I'm going to change over to a, a, a knees together posture, because when I'm in this position, I can balance my weight by bringing my torso through my legs, yeah? So I don't actually have to do as much dorsiflexion at the ankle. But when I've got my knees together, I can't change my center of gravity by bringing my chest forward. So I have to bring my knees forward. So it's a little bit harder. So this is the case with Pashasana. You've got to be able to get those knees to go forwards, okay? So what we can do instead, and we've rigged this up because we haven't got a pillar, is we can have our feet together and just pull myself forwards, yeah? So here, it'd be better actually if it wasn't at a height, if it was the same level as me, but this will sort of do. And I'm just trying to pull my knees towards the wall, basically. And I can feel that stretching down in here. Yeah, and then you would just hang out there for a while, basically. Good. All right, so then, so that's ones that sort of look semi yogurish all right? Um, but one of the most effective ones for stretching out that lower portion of the back of the leg is what I consider really a, a gym stretch, yeah? And so we have two versions of that. We're going to be standing up. I'll do this leg. We're going to be standing up. So the first thing is, although I'm at an angle, I'm at an angle so as that we can uh, get it nicely on camera, but you would be standing parallel to the wall, basically, or, sorry, perpendicular to the wall. Um, I'm just using the corner here. And what you're trying to do is make sure that both feet are pointing in exactly the same direction, so I don't want it turned out like this, and I don't want it turned the other way, so the whole of my foot is pointing in the direction I'm going. 
Yeah, and then I'm just pushing away from the wall into my heel. And make sure that I'm feeling activation in that foot. I'm lo locking out this knee, okay? So this is really gastrocnemius and the soleus muscle are being stretched, okay? But now when I want to hit just soleus muscle, so this would be basically my bent knee squatting, I'm going to move my back leg in a little bit, bend the knee, and then drop my bum towards my, my heel. Yeah? What I need to be careful of is that my knee doesn't go in or out. That it, it tracks directly in line with my foot. Yeah? So if I drew a line straight down here, it would come to this toe. Yeah? So you really want to watch that knee. So this would be, and you'll feel the stretch shift. You'll feel it shift down a little bit. Yeah? So this is basically hitting soleus more than it is gastroc. Yeah? So that one would actually help me with my ability to squat with bent knees. Yeah? So, of course, other ones we can do for that would be our utkatasana. Yeah? So we'd be holding that posture for a little bit longer and actually trying to get the bum down more. Okay? So, of course, there's one more thing that you can do, or quite easily do, and you can do this off of a step, or you can use a block. The only thing with blocks is that they can sort of flip up a bit, so you need to be careful. But really, again, all we're trying to do is get the toes higher than the heel. So we're going to use our block. I'll bring it quite close to the wall. Then we're going to stand on it. and just drop my heel down. And I can even do two at the same time, I think. Yeah. So that works quite well on a step, because it's more solid. But you can do this sort of thing, yeah? Or even one leg. One leg increases the weight, therefore increases the stretch, yeah? So, but it's sort of a step. We haven't got a step here, so we're making do with a block. But um, a step will work quite nicely, yeah? So those are just a few things to try and open up the, the ankle in different directions. Um, just if you're going to start on an ankle thing, basically just also think about rotating it this way and that, yeah? Because now we're getting to use some of those muscles and actually get some motor control as well. So I think this is sort of part, and it sort of also loosens up the, the whole area. So just rotating both back way and forwards and drawing using the muscle effort to actually draw your toes towards your shin, and then the muscle effort to, to actually plant our flex your foot. So really working through the full range of movement. Good. Hope that helped. And um, that's the end of our little ankle bit. And so we'll see you for some more stretching for yoga in our next episode. <laughs>